Now, every Thursday, we're going to be opening our surgery doors to help you feel healthier and happier in 2023. Today, we are talking about eating habits and how a few simple changes can make a big difference. Dr. Amir is live from his surgery. There he is. And gut health expert, Professor Tim Spector, is right here. Um, it was kind of like, a, 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 I guess, it was a health scare that you had that made you just kind of reassess what you were eating and what you were putting in your body. That's right, yeah. About 12 years ago, I had a some mini micro stroke uh, while I was on, up on a mountain trekking, Jeez. which uh, left me with, for three months with double vision and uh, high blood pressure, and I couldn't work or anything. And so that was a time when I re-evaluated really everything I've been doing in my career. Um, for 30 years, I've been looking at twins. I'd been doing epidemiology. I'd been looking at populations, why populations get unhealthy, why they overweight, etc. But I never really thought about individuals, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so it was, I was trying to think, oh, how can I get advice that is individual, you know, that one person can take? And, and really, we were lacking this. And it was only through studying twins, identical twins, trying to work out people who are like clones of each other, mm -hmm. live together. Why does one uh, get unhealthy, one get diabetes, the other one not? And it turned out it was all in their gut microbes. The, right. Even identical twins have huge differences in their gut microbes. And that, those two things together sort of clicked and said, right, I'm going to spend, you know, the rest of my career really trying to sort this out mm. and try to bring gut health uh, links to nutrition advice, which at 12 years ago was terrible and it's still terrible. We still haven't moved on. Right. Uh, and we're still obsessed with, you know, calories and fats and And you're sugars. saying that's not the way to... I mean, that doesn't work. And, and diets don't work. We know that. It's got to be a healthy lifestyle, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. We know that calorie counting doesn't work. We know that these crash diets don't no. work. So we've got to start thinking about sustainable ways which we can all improve our gut health that we can carry on for years. And, that's, and, and shift the whole pattern of what we're eating in this country, which is making us sicker and sicker, mm. to something that actually moves us in the right direction. I mean, you've got food there. This would be what you would probably have had before. You know, things like crisps. Muesli, though, but I guess that's not homemade and that's kind of out of a packet and sandwiches and things. Whereas here, what would you be... Talk us through what you would be eating yourself to make yeah, sure so that Yeah, so that was my old... That's just the old rubbish, well, rubbish. But, that's, but that's what I would thought as a doctor... Was you thought a that good, was OK? ..was good food, right? right okay. So brown bread, yeah. tuna, orange juice, smoothies, you know, low-fat milk. Mm. And it turns out, you know, completely wrong. Right. And only through, uh, you know, this personalised approach as well, I've learned through doing my tests with this company, Zoe, that I co-founded, that I can... Um, I can't tolerate carbs well. So muesli no. sandwiches, really Not bad for, for me. Give me okay. huge sugar spikes. So what do I have in the morning? I have uh, high full-fat yoghurt with nothing, no other additives. Right. I add a bit of kefir to it, which is fermented milk. OK. And is that I have, easy to get, though? Is that, it is, it is easy to get now. Yeah, um, okay. And you can make your own incredibly easily and cheaply. Okay. Just add a few granules to milk and you get it within 24 hours. Oh, OK. So, it's dead easy. You've got coffee there. And coffee is my new health drink. Okay? Seriously? Because we're all, yeah. always told, oh, that's really bad for you, oh, you should cut that out. No. It's black coffee, though, you don't put milk in it? Black coffee, uh, I don't put milk in it, and it is, you know, ten times healthier than any of these orange juices and things, which are, to make my mind, just like Coca-Cola or Pepsi. So right. black coffee um, is fantastic for your gut health as well. It's got fibre in it, it's got these... Defence chemicals called polyphenols. Mm. And you've got to remember, it comes from a plant. It's a fermented plant. So microbes make coffee. Right. And they make it this delicious drink that we've thought is dangerous or bad for us. Mm -hmm. But all the new evidence shows that's absolutely not the case. And you can have up to about five cups uh, a wow. day without any problems. Seriously? Yeah, on average. Now, everyone's different. OK. So I'm not saying... There are some people who are sensitive to caffeine and things, but... Everyone else, it, all the evidence shows that people who have regular coffee, have less heart attacks, live longer than people that don't. Gosh, that's, that is extraordinary because, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? Tell you what, we've got Dr Amir with us. Dr Amir, that's incredible, isn't it, when you think? Because oftentimes we're told, you know, don't have coffee or cut back on coffee and all, all of that. But this is what we're being told now. 
Yeah, I'm so glad to hear that because I live off coffee. So that's great <laughs> news for me. Obviously, too much coffee can be a bad thing for some people. It can cause palpitations and anxiety for some people. But it's great to hear the health benefits of coffee as well. I'll be making another brew after this. <laughs> Well, exactly. But the thing is, we're, we're talking about a healthy gut and how important that is um, and how it, it affects just about every part of your body. Yes, that's right. And when it's unhealthy, that can affect every part of your body as well. So if you haven't got all this healthy microbiome that we that is essential for our health, really, you start to feel unwell because the microbiome is feeling unwell. Now, the microbiome is this this whole organism uh, that we, we call uh, in our gut. It's trillions of bacteria, viruses, fungi, microbes in our gut that help keep us healthy. Uh, and if, if they're not healthy, you can start to feel things like irritable bowel syndrome can be linked to a poor microbiome. So things like bloatedness, abdominal cramps, constipation, diarrhea, but also the microbiome helps uh, our immune system. And if our immune system isn't working well, the a poor microbiome has been linked to what we call autoimmune disorders, not necessarily cause them, but linked to them. Right. And this is where your immune system is linked to disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis and even thyroid disease. But broader symptoms of a, a poor wow. microbiome uh, can be headaches, fatigue, difficulty losing weight, uh, and, and, and even mood disturbances. Now, I talk to my patients all the time about a good, healthy microbiome and diet. It's a relatively new concept that, you know, Professor Spector's been talking about it for, for a long, long time, but it's filtering through to us clinicians now as well. Uh, and I like to talk to them about how to do it on a budget because there's a cost of living crisis where I work in central Bradford. And the, many of my patients don't have a lot of money, but you can still have uh, a healthy gut on a budget. So I taught them about frozen vegetables because it's all about getting vegetables in your diet. Frozen vegetables, just use as much as you want, put the rest in the freezer, less food waste. One of my favorite things, tinned uh, chickpeas and kidney beans. You can add them to salads and rice, really good for you and, and cheap as well. Make things in bulk. So, so bulk cook things, freeze portions, use them later, as long as they're plant friendly, gut microbiome friendly things, buy in bulk as well. So nuts and lentils buy in bulk and, and that works out cheaper. And don't waste your money on supplements, get your nutrients from whole foods. Those are my budget hacks to a, a healthy <laughs> you've got a big, gut. You've got a big thumbs up, a big thumbs up from Tim, definitely. Yes, um, yes absolutely. It's great and to see GPs, you know, know getting the message he's now. He's very so. enlightened, well, he is, though. Yes, Amir, he's Amir a is a, is a beacon of light and hope. Um, so there are things that we can do. The good news is there are things that we can do for ourselves. So what would you say, a few tips for people watching just now, how they could you know, get better gut health? OK, the, there are five, my five big tips, yeah. I, I would say, is start by increasing your plant diversity. OK. And we go for this magic number of 30, because that's the study we did, which showed that was the sweet spot. If you can get 30 plants a week, and remember, coffee counts as one plant. OK. Nuts, each nut and each seed is a plant as well. Right. Herbs and spices are plants. So it's not as difficult yeah. as when you say sounds. 30, you kind of go, oh, my goodness. Yeah. But when you actually work it out, that's really and, good. And different coloured vegetables count as right. a different plant. Okay. So, uh, you know, a purple carrot is different to a... Uh, uh, an and orange. adding colour to your plate is really and good And adding well, colour to your plate is important because that gives you the natural defence mm -hmm. chemicals. Mm -hmm. So the rainbow idea. F regular fermented foods, and that's what I do, giving myself a shot of... Um, whether it's yogurt, kefir, uh, it could be kimchi, sauerkraut, all these fermented pickles oh, and right, things. Okay. A little bit of that every day. Uh, that is really good for your gut, mm -hmm. and we don't have enough of that in our diets. Right. And then, of course, you've got uh, giving your gut a rest. Okay. So the idea that you should eat in a shorter time frame. Yeah. This time. Uh, Restricted eating, so try and eat in 10 hours rather than in 16 hours. So oh, that's impressive. so interesting because Nicole was asking that. Healthy snacks or no snacks? Better not to. It's but, better not to, right. but if it's the only way you're going to get your nuts and your seeds, then, then, then that's there okay. are the odd exception. But generally, we eat snack far too much in the UK with bad snacks. Yeah. And then finally, it's obviously reducing your ultra-processed foods, gradually cutting them out of your diet because... We know they're bad for your gut health and right. they generally don't have the fibre, they don't have those really good defence chemicals that we all want. And there's, um, I think, moving forward in, you know, for this year, trying to plan a sustainable way of moving, doing all these things in a small way gradually, 
And we have an app now, a free app, that's um, just going live today to help people with these habits. It's the Zoe Health Study app they can download. Right. Just nudge them along yeah. so that there's ways of doing I like doing nudging. That. Nudging is good. Nudging, yeah. And, of course, <laughs> you know, and reading more about gut health and all these foods, right. I think, is also really absolutely vital for everybody. Absolutely. And I know that you would agree with me. Yesterday, I was fuming. Um, on social media, um, some company, which I won't even name, um, have, have said that I've endorsed diet pills. And never in a million years would I ever do such a thing. So for goodness sake, do not send these charlatans. That's the most polite way that I have. If I wasn't live on the telly, I would say a lot more than that. Um, don't send them your money. For goodness sake, don't. Listen to people like Tim. Listen to people like Dr Amir. That's the way forward. It's all about being healthy, happy, balanced and look after your gut. Exactly. Thank you. I just had to get that rant. Thank you very much. And thank you, Amir. And we've got more medical advice next Thursday. If you've got any questions or anything you would like to talk to our team about, if you're worried or concerned about any health issues, email your questions to lorraine at itv.com.